My dad was born and raised in Steubenville, Ohio. His father was a Greek immigrant. He came through Ellis Island in 1910. In 1933, his father passed away and he, was ju he had just turned 14. His uncle Bill, he helped my dad buy the car for $35? 35 bucks. From a junkyard. My dad was the oldest of three kids, and so he was the man of the family. And in the photo album, you see him hauling lumber, I mean, big tree, not even lumber, trees. So he did odd jobs, and he was always very mechanically inclined. He had the car from there, um, and then the war broke out, and he went and enlisted uh, into the Navy to um, flight engineering school. Had the car at that time, started at his mom's house, and he was shipped out um, to the Pacific. When he got out of the Navy, he 44. and his um, best friend, uh, Truman Wright, were in Maryland. And they picked up the car in Steubenville. Truman had a, a contract job in Culver City, California. So they made a cross the country trip in this car. Uh, in the photo album, there's pictures of them going across the Great Divide and Yosemite and all that. That was that whole road trip that he and his buddy did. And they were both like 6'5", 230 in this car. It followed him there, and my dad worked at um, uh, Howard Hughes, Hughes Aircraft, on the Spruce Goose. And then um, he met my mom um, in California, and they bought a place up in Idlewild on their honeymoon night. And the car then was stored after um, they got married up in Idlewild. That was where they were going to have their summer house. And then he mo we moved to Portland in like 52 to work for Tektronix. The car continued to be stored down in Idlewild. He'd make, he'd make kind of annual trips down to Idlewild, start it up, drive it around a little bit, but it stayed down there. And then in 1970, um, he flew down to Idlewild and drove it back up. <laughs> and he was so proud of the fact that he only had to change the spark plugs and put some fresh gas into it. And it started right up. He got pulled over three times so they could check to see if that he was okay. There was no violation, they just wanted to see the car. My dad had a big warehouse in downtown Portland. He stored the car there, out of the weather and um, at elements, and it was basically tarped for years. For it, 20 years, yeah. I would say. Mm -hmm. And then in 1999, he was selling his warehouse, and he had a big auction to get rid of all the tooling equipment and everything there. The new owner calls him up, on a Saturday morning, he goes, hey Frank, I thought you were going to have your Model A moved today. And Frank goes, yeah, I am. He said, well, it's gone. Even when my mom passed away, I never saw my dad cry. He was so sad. He was in tears. And I was, I was tired. It was 1030 at night when he called, and I was thinking, why is he crying over this car? I couldn't understand it, you know? And. Uh, uh, so Tina, being, being uh, the Greek in her, she wasn't about to let anybody take advantage of her. She had gotten on the internet and uh, contacted all the news stations, all the Model A clubs, everyone she could up in Oregon. And um, out of this, they did a news story on her father. And um, what came out of this is, is all his friends saw the news story and started calling him from Tektronix, who they, he hadn't seen in years. She made the uh, car so hot that uh, they had to get rid of it. The people that had it abandoned it in a lot about a week later. The Frank, sheriff said that he's never seen anything like it, that, that he was guaranteed that we'd never see the car again. So we promised my dad once we got it back, it's like, okay, put it in the garage, put as many locks as you possibly can on it, and we, when we add a third car, a third bay to our garage, we'll move it down here. <laughs> but the uh, sheriffs, after they found it, towed it back to his house and uh, he said that was the first time that the car had ever been towed since he had had it in 1937. Wow. He'd never had it towed. So we finally got a garage and he pulled it down here and we, uh, we drove it around the neighborhood and we ran it in the neighborhood parades and stuff for eight years. But it would always overheat <laughs> in yeah. every parade. Every time we took it out, we would end up you know, pushing it back or towing it back. Something broke on it, it just kept breaking. We, uh, we like to joke that the, that the uh, car was born in the first depression and, and rebuilt in the second depression. We wanted a ground up restoration on it. And that was done, uh, we, we had a friend, Chris Lahude, and uh, he took, he had a body guide from Mexico that was fantastic. And he patched and repaired probably over 80 holes on this car and uh, kept as much original metal as we could on it. And then we had the frame and the, 
the transmission and the, uh, the drivetrain done here with Charlie's garage in Mesa. Thing. He took all the painted panels and the body and assembled everything and it, it just turned out beautiful. It's become a part of our family really. It's like a member of the family. Before we owned cars, my brother and I, um, we had to learn how to do everything on a car before we could able, we were able to even think about buying a car. And um, this is the car that we learned a lot of that on. But yeah, I feel very connected with him. He was a very blessed man and um, he worked really hard for what he had. And knowing that he, this was his first girlfriend. He did everything with her. And you can't be mad driving it. 